Welcome to the January 2020 horoscope. This is Miss Jenny and I am your astrologer. Okay, so folks, we've got quite, quite the celestial sky above us moving forward. Um, for those of you who follow the channel, I did have a bit of a freak out yesterday. I'm not completely over it. So uh, bear with me. All right, so this month we've got some major planetary activity going. So we know Jupiter and Saturn have just moved into Aquarius finally as of last month. Now, now is when those drum beats are really going to start singing songs because Uranus, the dispositor of that Jupiter and Saturn, is now going to station direct in Taurus, squaring Jupiter and Saturn. So, Jupiter and Saturn. So, bu buckle up your seatbelts, honey pie. It's going to be quite the bumpy ride this month. Make no mistake about it. So, the first thing... The first major event that we're looking at is going to occur around the 13th. Now, caveat, we should be feeling this for at least a week because remember, the outer planets take longer to change directions. We feel them much earlier on. But in this particular case, we've got a, a clustering of planetary activity that are emphasizing this Uranus station. So we're really going to be hearing and feeling it um, for a full week, maybe a little bit more. Uh, of the 13th so count back just use it like you would use an eclipse count back 10 days which is going to take us to the third um which we already know from other reports is a hot button day we, there's something going on around the third that's going to be of major portent so that will be kicking off more of what we can expect or, or will be associated with or impact even impacted by this year on a station that's going to occur on the 13th you ever hear the old saying there that was that there's a Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. Yeah, we're we're living under a Chinese curse right now. All right. So what does that mean for us here on the planet? Um, and not necessarily here in the US specifically, because Lord knows the Americans, I am one of them, um, we're having quite a time already with the Bible thumping zealots and the greedy politicians and the hypocrites and everybody who's got their hands in everybody else's pocket. Not to mention the racism and the systemic racism and the desire for some people to maintain literally a surf, what is it, a land baron surf relationship between the haves and the rest of the world, which would be the have nots. So um, I only bring this up because we are in the process of major cultural and social change on all fronts across all borders across the planet. So um, this is more than socialist, you know, rise the proletariat classes. It's, it's much more than that. It's much deeper and much more significant. The goddess has risen. The world needs to be returned to a more equanimous, equilateral place because we've been very heavy on the patriarchy and it's been very toxic. We see what that has brought us. And all that has brought us is domination and the desire for domination and endless selfish consumption without regard for long-term consequences for generations underneath us so there's a time and a place for everyone and everything and their expression but too much of anything is a bad thing so you know water is good too much of it will drown you so we're kind of there in terms of an evolutionary process so the goddess is back and the world is trying to right itself before we collapse in on ourselves so that's why i bring that up because there are those people who would hang on to days gone by thinking that that's the way the world should be and should always be and that's not the case okay now with Uranus stationing looking at my charts with Uranus stationing squaring that Jupiter Saturn we know squares are going to emphasize and exaggerate and really make things big 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 right so with Uranus squaring that Jupiter and Saturn watch these keywords as they come up in headlines ethics integrity the rights of the public, you know, what's good for the group as opposed to good for the individual. Um, the, the, the separation of classes, you know, and or the acceptance of everyone as being value or valuable, regardless of their class stations. It will be interesting to see how this all, sorry, how this, oh, <laughs> how this all plays out in areas like, um, as an example, uh, India, where the caste system or the class system is still in operation today. That would be very interesting. Or in places like Africa, where the the male-dominant misogyny, and also Asia, right, where male-dominant and misogyny, the two unfortunately go hand-in-hand, hand, um, 
like dance partners uh, are still strong in effect and in force and how these things are going to handle the transition and the demand for evolution in the social structures as we move forward. We're going to be seeing a lot of that. We may be seeing some hints of this or some, um, some beeping warnings of it in January from different parts of the globe. It'll be interesting. Now, with Uranus squaring Jupiter and Saturn uh, from Taurus, the, the sign of values, uh, to Aquarius, the sign of ideals, literally this month is all, all going to be about putting your money and your mouth where your values are. Right. So, you know, we like to make a big joke because it makes us feel smart. Like we have some control and some understanding of the situation. You know, oh, follow the money, follow the money, follow the money. Well, you know, yeah, follow the money and follow where the feet go. What? So this month, it's not going to be easy to just fob off a lot of quick platitudes. Oh, follow the money. Oh, you know, what do you expect? Politicians. Oh, blah, blah. Like all that stuff that makes it easy to just flip stuff off. Because in reality, we're saying it, but we're not paying attention. We're not actually going to do anything about it. Right. This month changes everything for everybody so now you're not, not no one is going to be given the 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 license or the leeway the leisure of being able to spout off a lot of nonsense and not put some something behind it something substantive because taurus is the sign of values and it's also the sign of substance so where taurus is taurus demands that you give them something substantive. And if you've ever known a Taurus, they can seem heavy handed, right? They can seem very handed. And depending on where they are in their own evolution, they can be, they can be very materialistic and very sticky fingered, right? Because once they get their hands on something, they're not letting it go. And whatever it is, they want the best, the most expensive, you know, the most solid, you know, kind of thing. Or um, if they're more evolved, uh, those Taurians are more fixed on building uh, with the resources that they have in front of them and maintaining their resources. So they're not greedy as much as they as, un as much as they understand the value of beautiful physical things that have been crafted um, and the necessity of having strong foundations. There's a there's a subtle difference there, but you'll know it. The lower end of Taurus, like Capricorn. They're money grubbing. So everything's all about what is it? They know the price of everything and the value of nothing, right? The other side of that, the enlightened, more evolved version of Taurus, you know, is they understand the value of simple things, right? And don't, they don't get lost in the sauce with all this stuff because somebody says it has this value. So they, they have their values and priorities on straight. Now, with that said, Uranus is there and Uranus and Taurus is shaking up a lot of people's values, right? So things people thought would last a lifetime, the security they thought they could count on, you know, uh, the things that they thought were important to them in terms of having a good, a good life, which is a very Taurus phrase, right? All those things are being shattered um, or transformed or metamorphosized or, or obliterated with Uranus's passage into Taurus. And we'll be going through this for a while. With that said, Jupiter and Saturn, remember, Jupiter and Saturn are the outermost planets in terms of our, our personal self. They are the maximal expression of self, which means it's the part of us that makes contact with society around us. Those are social planets. With Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius, it is demanding, not suggesting, not hinting, not asking. No, it is demanding that you step up to bat and recognize that social values, your social values are just as important as everything else because they are a reflection of you and the people around you, the society around you is just as instrumental and valuable and needed in terms of what makes and allows you to be who you are as anything else in your life. And you have to give that, put your money where your mouth is and put your feet where your principles are. Yeah. So with, Mar with Mars, so with Uranus swearing that it's literally a call to action, right? What, no, no BS anymore, right? Only idiots going to believe the BS. What do you stand for? What matters? Where are you going with your life? Like at the end of the day where you meet society and society meets you at the maximal expression of yourself, who are you really? Who are you really? And what have you done for the rest of us lately? Mm. So. I know there are people out there who have uh, incredibly well-developed persecution complexes that are moaning and groaning right now, but I do so much and I've given so much. And, oh, oh. 
listen, Cookie, life's not fair. Life is not fair and that is unfortunate, but it was a good thing that you did. And if you did it out of the goodness of your heart, this wouldn't be a problem. And some people take more than they give sometimes. But anybody who knows anything knows that short-term gains typically equal long-term losses. So taking as much as you can selfishly in the short term only means you're going to lose even more in the long run. And anybody who does anything um, for other people with a big picture in mind, they get that. And this is the time this month when we're all going to get a little taste of that humble pie and really have to get honest with ourselves about what we've been doing and what we're going to do. What are we going to do to get through this with everybody else? All right. So all of you mask under the mask under the nose, people, people in their ugly noses. It's going to come back to bite you. Going to come back to bite you. Darwin can't come and visit your doorstep fast enough. We're, 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 we're ready with the popcorn to watch the Darwin Awards. Anyway. So, uh, blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay. Um, So this whole week between like the 3rd and the 14th, I'm going to give it one more day on that that side of the Uranus station as a power packed, busy, active, holy cow, chaotic week. Um, As a recommendation for yourself, be mindful that chaos reigns during this time. So try not to get involved in anything that requires extreme precision. Uh, work or wording or focus um, give yourself some latitude and Jesus if you need to self-medicate self-medicate um, I joke with my employers all the time about giving me Xanax <laughs> things that make a nice employee perk especially right now okay oh the stories the stories Jesus some of you people I you must have been raised by wolves I swear to God Oy, I don't know how these people exist anyway okay so For you, what I want you to do now, this is your exercise. I want you to look at the houses. If you have your chart, look at the houses where Uranus and Jupiter, Saturn are sitting because those houses, and it gets a little weird, right? Those houses are going to be very, very active houses and you're going to be taking a lot of hits and a lot of dodging, a lot of bullets, right? Like they may just choo, 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 (laughs) dodging a lot of, of trouble during this time. But, um, right between them which is going to put us at late pisces early aries hang on aquarius pisces aries taurus early early hold that thought yeah that's gonna be late pisces late pisces so anywhere you find late degrees of pisces in your chart is really where you're going to feel it and where you can expect the most opportunity and demand for transformation to occur. So if you're looking to utilize this aspect to its best and highest expression, and you want to get out of this mostly unscathed, here's your call to action. Find the house and find the location of late Pisces degrees in your chart. When you find that spot, look at what house of life that represents for you. That is the area right now where the most demand for transformation, radical transformation, is being called upon. So you're literally being asked to change everything you used to believe and know about how that part of your life is supposed to work and reconsider a whole new way of doing things that's completely alien, foreign, and new from the way you've done it all your life until this point. Or you can just write it out. You don't have to do anything. You can just write it out. Okay. The other thing is when you're looking at this, also look at where Jupiter and Saturn are in the life houses on your chart. Um, this is the area where you're going to have the most, uh, this is the area where you're going to have the most life lessons taught to you in some really unexpected ways. So if you're familiar with some of the old Kung Fu movies, there was always the sensei, right? You know, the silent and powerful yet almost cruel master who taught you great life lessons and, you know, very formidable and inscrutable ways. Forgive my bad impression. I can do that. You can't. <laughs> um, that's Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius. And where you find that in the life house in your charge, where you're going to come up against masters or teachers, right? And, and people not even realizing that they're acting as a teacher right now. They're giving you experience to learn from. They don't even realize what their role in this is um, that are going to help create this transformation in you. So expect um, 
expect most pushback and challenge for your own improvement coming from that Jupiter Saturn conjunction in the house it falls in in your chart where Uranus is in your chart all right now because remember we've got a square going here where Uranus falls in your chart look at the house that that's falling in so if um let's start with Aries rising or Aries sun right so for Aries Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius will fall in their 11th house which would be friends social circles random strangers off the street bizarre people on subways uber drivers right um you know DoorDash people whatever just random events and people and circumstances that that you don't that you're not personally familiar with right the world outside around you that's where they'll receive the most pushback and re and opportunities to grow right and not easy lessons because you know the the inscrutable master has things to teach you grasshopper <laughs> sorry kung fu <laughs> david carradine kung fu all right now with that said if there were aries we're talking about that uranus will land in their second house so where they can expect to see the most um unexpected developments right that are external the circumstances coming at you like a high-speed train and you can't get off the tracks fast enough right uranus is the high-speed train and whatever house of life uranus is falling in in your chart that's where you can expect to like oh my god get me off the tracks and you can't right so these are the circumstances that are coming at you for somebody with aries or a uh, uh, solar house aries or aries rising that would be their second house of finances and their ability to earn and make a living um, and their personal resources not just money so they they can expect to see major changes in fortune and all sorts of of unexpected things happening in terms of circumstance that impact their ability to make money and the money that they have right because remember Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus all this is about transforming yourself right okay so with that let's just keep going all right so if you're a Taurus everything in life is going to feel like a runaway train like speeding towards you oh my god um you're just gonna to have to and you know Taurus is one of the most unflappable signs right it takes a lot to get a Taurus like ah! um <laughs> we may be seeing that now so understand that life is just just coming at you like a high-speed train and you're just gonna have to keep up as best you can and understand there are some things that are just unavoidable and take it where you get it like just take it and deal with it with that said Jupiter and Saturn where you're being taught lessons where you're being uh, given opportunities to transform yourself and for Taurus particularly this is definitely radical transformation of the whole identity that's being at play here that Jupiter Saturn will be coming from your 10th house of public recognition as well as your public image right so things that you do as a career instead of a job things that you identify with that when you say I am a and then finish the sentence that's a 10th house thing right it's the thing that other people can see about you all right expect your life lessons you know your inscrutable Jedi master life lessons to come through that 10th house and the people that are represented by the 10th house which would be authority figures some of you may be going through massive um, and unexpected career changes uh, at this time I'm just saying um, or it could be you're having radical and massive changes in bosses at this time who will really be a salt in an open wound um, but again these are these are unwitting participants in your lessons your master lessons to become the great Jedi you know kung fu warrior so take it for what it is and work through it um Gemini you will be taking this sorry you will be taking this Uranus in your 12th house of secrets and sorry eh, Jupiter and Saturn will be coming out of the night so for Gemini's it's going to get a little weird and typically Gemini's are good about you know kind of dancing around this stuff you guys are real good about being light on your feet and you know doing a whole Fred Astaire routine in the most unbelievable circumstances however this one may catch up a little bit so we're going to start with the Jupiter Saturn in the ninth which for you has everything to do with you really getting serious about life and your long-term plans right really um, getting clear and getting honest about what your long-range plans are so no more horsing around and, and pretending and playing and thinking you're gonna be 12 forever or 19 whatever age it is in your head this is the time you're gonna to have to get clear and get honest 
Uranus, because it's squaring Uranus in the 12th house, this is also a time of deep spiritual reckoning. So some of you may be at the closer to the end of your life, midlife or later, and you're, you're, you're having your comeuppance, you know, and you're having this to add, you're having to answer to yourself about what you have and haven't done up until this point and what you're going to do moving forward. For those of you who are younger, right, this is a time uh, when circumstances will force you to think longer and harder about the big picture and the rest of your life in ways that are not typical or normal for anybody your age. Um, but this is what you got to do. And there's no, you know, there's no a whole keeping options open, right? So when you're young, we like, especially, and old people do it too, but we like to think that you, can, you should keep your options open. Baby cakes, this is not the time. And trying to keep your options open this month while you're while you're weighing these things right weighing one against the other it's it's going to backfire and it will it will end disastrously this is a time to get really honest with yourself so go with the program cancer this uranus will be in your 11th house right sorry um and that means Jupiter and Saturn is coming out of your eighth. And this is just going to be a really weird wobbly time. And I'm really sorry about that. I don't really have anything. I, I don't really have anything here except maybe you're getting plastic surgery. Um, I would advise, right. So that's, yeah, mm, I would advise against that. Uh, uh, so for those of you cancers who are looking at elective surgery, things that you don't absolutely need, like getting implants or fillers or cosmetic procedures, this is not the month to do it. Do not do it. Um, getting involved in any type of cosmetic procedure at this point in time invites a lot of unexpected problems and mishaps that nobody would have seen coming. So it's not that you're dealing with incompetent people as much as there are a lot of gremlins out there, out there, oh, sorry, in the mix that are going to make these things difficult. Um, also, this is going to be, this is going to be a very testing period for you as you start um, coming to some hard realizations about people that you considered uh, friends or, or people who are like family to you, um, and also where your loyalties lie. And if your loyalties have been misplaced, or if your loyalty is, is way in excess of what's actually deserved, or conversely, if you expect more loyalty than is actually merited from other people, your expectations may be way high right now. So there will be a lot of shifts and changes and breakups in terms of your social circles and your social travels um, and loyalty and principles are going to be big deals right now. So remember that at, where the sword cuts both ways. So it's not just them being worthy of your loyalty. This may be a call to action if you get really honest, but whether you're expecting a lot more loyalty than other people, um, than you actually deserve from other people. All right, Leo, Leo. Now, uh, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, and Aquarius are really getting hammered uh, with this particular eclipse. And uh, Leos and Scorpios more, believe it or not, than Taurus and Aquarius. Leo, this eclipse, uh, I'm sorry, Uranus uh, will be acting up, kicking up dust in your 10th house. That means that Jupiter and Saturn will be, will be warring with it in your seventh. So uh, th there's good things and bad things about it. So the good things is all going to be out there in, in the open. It will be visible. You'll know exactly who the enemies are that you need to worry about. You'll know who your enemies are. That's always better than not knowing, right? With Uranus in the 10th house, again, radical transformation of your public image. So this is a really good time to ask yourself, well, no, this is a really good time for you to be honest with yourself about how the world sees you and then ask yourself, how would you change what the world sees, right? So presenting a radical, new, different image of yourself um, that's more in line with who you see yourself as is really key right now. With that said, Jupiter and Saturn will be in Aquarius in your seventh house, squaring that. So you may find that your teachers are coming in the form of other people, partners and friends and coworkers um, that you feel particularly close to. These are not random people. These are people that you uh, see as your peers, right? These are people that you feel are on an equal level with you that may be giving you lots of pushback or, or participating in situations that, that they don't realize that they're involved in specifically to help you get feedback about how you can change, transform or improve you know, your public persona, like where you have literally been falling short for yourself, 
because you're better than that, bigger than that, older than that, younger than that, whatever than that, whatever it is, you are blank than that. And this is going to come now with pushback and lessons from the people around you that you feel are your peers and in the best position to be honest with you because you'll be getting yeah a lot of honesty too so listen appreciate the gift of honesty when you get it because the worst friend in the world is the one who lies to you and never tells you the truth okay virgo this uranus will be occurring this uranus activity will be occurring in your ninth house and that means that jupiter and saturn in Aquarius will will be kicking up dust in your sixth so for you it's a little bit different so on the one hand Jupiter and Saturn in the sixth house there's uh, there's going to be a compelling or compulsion or a demand or a forcing of you to revamp your systems your habits your routines physical health may be an issue these days insomnia nerves all this sort of stuff you may have more trouble digesting food than you normally do um, but your physical well-being and your physical environment is going to come up as um, both a blessing and a curse right now. So work with that in mind and ask yourself where you can uh, take whatever's coming up as an opportunity to improve circumstances in your life you may have been ignoring. Now with Uranus in the ninth house, and so this is kind of a um, this is kind of a weird thing here. With Uranus in the ninth house, there's going to be a compulsion or a need or a, a desire to be of service, right? To your principles, to the world at large, to, to put your money where your mouth is and your feet where your prayers are. Um, however, for you and these particular planetary pairings, time management is going to be a big, big problem and a big, big life lesson, which sounds funny coming from... Um, when we talk about Virgos, of all the people, time management is not something we have ever associated with Virgo as a problem. But for whatever reason, this time around in January, it's really going to spotlight and show you where the cracks are in the armor. And uh, your time management, your systems management, the things, the systems that you use to manage your life and, and maintain are under fire right now and needing improvement. So you're going to find that a lot of stuff starts falling apart around your feet, specifically give you an opportunity to see where the weak parts are so that you can fix that and change it so that things run better i know my virgo's like that libra Let's see. um you may be the only, <laughs> you guys may be the only sign in the zodiac having a good time right now um so uranus will be in your eighth house and jupiter and saturn will be in your fifth so this could be one of two things if you have children your children are going to be front and center issues concern and priorities for you which they always are anyway obviously but more so more now than usual um so they may be bringing a whole big circus traveling circus of crisis and problems back home for that re that not requires but would benefit from your involvement in them um also, uh, for those of you who are not dealing with your own children, this is a great, this is a good and a bad time for baby making. So be on high alert for unexpected pregnancies. And if the doctor has told you, oh, you probably won't get pregnant or you can't, like if the chances are low, like anytime you say the chances are, and it's a negative diagnostic, like, oh, the chances are very low that you'll get pregnant. Assume the opposite right now. And that means that the, that the exact opposite will occur and the chances are very high for you to have some type of karmic pregnancy occur. Now, for those of you young ladies out there and men um, who are of the reproductive ages and this is an issue or a possibility for you um, and you're thinking to yourself, hmm, well, karmic, yeah, so that means the baby's supposed to be here, right? Oh, great, I'll just stop using birth control. Every pregnancy you have is a karmic pregnancy. The difference is any pregnancies that come through right now are going to be wrought with issues like a lot of obligations and burdens above and beyond normal parent burden obligations this is not the time to go rushing in to have accidental pregnancies trust me when i tell you this will not go the way you plan it uh and certainly not the way you expect or hope don't do it don't do, don't do it <laughs> so go have your fun understand you're going to attract um people who are more crazy than usual um which could be a fun thing, I suppose. I, not that, and 
also too, folks, remember, not that anyone is not crazy at this point. We're all literally off our rockers <laughs> after this year. Um, but, you know, I'm just saying, like, people are people are more likely in your life and your personal life and your dating life specifically to not play by the rules um, in fun ways as well as bad ones. So, you know, make sure you sort out the problem children and, and settle in with the fun ones and use your birth control. Okay, that brings us to Scorpio. Oh, Scorpio. I love you guys so much. Oh my God, I love you guys so much. And much like the people who live with you now, I could never live with you, could never live with you. And they can't live with you either. You're a problem child this month. So, <laughs> please don't hate me. I'm just kidding around, sort of. Okay, so Jupiter and Saturn is in Aquarius. It is in your fourth house. It is being squared by Mars in your seventh. This means, my Scorpio friends, that that heavy-handed, in control, on top of everything, and it's my way or the highway. This is my house and my rules, and you will play by them. All the things that make Scorpio what it is, including the good stuff. Unfortunately, right now, it's now, again, remember, everything this month is about transformation, radical transformation and breakthroughs, right? And breaking through by breaking apart. So you're going to find that your teachers, you, yes, even you could use a few lessons. Your teachers are going to come through your household members. So, um, and possibly even the family outside of the house, but definitely household members. So expect pushback and being stretched to your limit and being, being reminded to other people have boundaries and other people have, you know, some right to say no and resist at home and also in your personal relationships. So right now, the, the biggest thing that's being asked, especially with Uranus and Taurus in that seventh house, is for you to get your foot up off the damn brake, get your foot off their necks, for God's sakes. And also consider that it may be possible, my Scorpio friends, that a little more breathing room in your relationships, a little more air around you and your partner and the people that you love, a little more space where you aren't in there playing with the buttons and, you know, surveilling and everything else that you do might not be a bad thing. And there is no month like this month that will drive that point home. So when you start getting pushback from people you thought you knew um, and are complaining about things that you've always done and now suddenly it's a problem, understand that, yeah, it's always been a problem. It's just that now they're finally saying something about it. So take this as an opportunity, my Jedi Knight, <laughs> my Kung Fu master to be, to work it out and look look hard and honest at yourself about how you have been doing a disservice, not just to them, but also to yourself. Because remember, you are blank than that. All right. And that brings us to Sagittarius. Uh, let's see what we got here. Sagittarius, Jupiter and Saturn will be occurring in your third house and your sixth. Yes, 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 yes. So, Jupiter and Saturn in your third house is going to bring some discipline to your big mouth. Who, did I say that? No, I'm just, I'm almost kidding. Now, before y'all get on, the Sagittarius are usually very good about being good humor about stuff. So let me just clarify what I'm saying here so you, don't, you guys don't run away with it and, and turn it into something that it's not. Sagittarians, between, the difference between Gemini and Sagittarius is Gemini is very much the man on the ground, the report of the unbiased thing, like the, 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 like the constant daily connections between one thing and another, constantly bridging things and passing information from one place to another. That's their job. Sagittarius, on the other hand, is like the scout that looks out in the distance and sees this thing. It's the storyteller, the comedian, the salesman. Sag is the Jupiterian energy, loves to blow things up, and nobody, honey, nobody loves to philosophize and offer their well thought out opinion than a Sagittarius. And if you've ever had the good fortune of dealing with Sagittarius, who was a really funny Sagittarius and was a really good storyteller, oh my God, there's nothing more entertaining. We love them for that. On the other hand, if you've dealt with these Sagittarians who are uh, ponderous pontificators, uh, philo philosophical, blah, 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 and constantly want to debate, and yada, 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 knowing full well that you'll never win a debate with them because they've already mapped out how this is going to go. They're just literally pulling you in so they can set you up to knock you over, right? Um, and they're, they're always convinced that they're right. They're always convinced that they're right. Until they're wrong, then they're already off to something else to be right about. 
So, you know, the bad side of Sagittarius and that Jupiter energy is the, the negative expression of this can be just a little sanctimonious and just a little, you know, full of themselves. Um, so if that's you, my Sagittarian friends, this Jupiter and Saturn in your third house is really going to put the big kibosh on you being irresponsible with the things that you say. So now there's going to be full accounting of your promises and your opinions and your thoughts. Like there is no forgiving leeway that you normally get because people love you. And well, you know, that's just the way you are. Um, now you're going to hold your feet to your fire because you said on this day at this time, da -da -da -da, and you're going to hold you to it. Every single thing, right? Including how this this saying this thing so irresponsibly now impacts blah, 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 blah. Yeah, fun stuff, huh? Um, also, by the way, just a hot tip, the Jupiter and Saturn in your third house this month, don't speed, don't speed. Watch your speed limit everywhere and make sure all your tail lights and signals, everything's working because you will get such heavy citations from law enforcement where your vehicle is concerned just because it's that kind of a month for you. All right, now, with that said, Uranus, the mover and shaker, the exploder of things, uh, three, four, five, six, is in your sixth house of daily routines. Sorry. <laughs> daily routines, physical health, and uh, servants. If you have people that work for you, if you're one of those Sagittarians, that's a big boss. Um, all of these things come down to systems. And this, is, you're going to find that your systems are disrupted. Everything is disrupted. So your daily routines, your systems, all these things are, in, are going to be disrupted in a major way this month. And um, that, that may be what causes people or gives people a reason to hold your feet to the fire about your, your promises, right? Because your intentions are not necessarily going to match up with what you, your actual can do's. So be aware of that. Mm. Um, and understand that you've got a lot more nervous energy going on right now this month. It's just going to be a hard, literally, it's going to be a hard month for you physically. So you're going to be burning the candle at both ends and just worn down completely mentally and physically. So take some time out for yourself because you're really going to need it. All right, Capricorn. Capricorn. <laughs> um, I wish I had better news for you. One, two, three, four, five. Just what you want to hear. Okay. So Capricorn, Jupiter and Saturn will be occurring in the Aquarius, will be occurring in your second house. And that means that Uranus will be in your one, two, three, four, five, sorry. Only astrologer I know that can't count. And that means that Uranus will be in your fifth. So with that said, excuse me, um, finances are, this is a, this, so finances are not just going to take a hit, um, but because of circumstances beyond your control, especially for those of you Capricorns who are involved in the stock market, uh, your overconfidence will boomerang and hurt you. Um, so there will be a lot of budgeting revision and, uh, investment reconsideration and, um, a whole lot of ups and downs and twists and turns like a really good story that will be occurring with any speculative investments you get involved in. This is not a good time to take risks. And this is also a very important time to understand that what used to be considered a safe bet may not be so safe right now. And so you might want to rethink how you make your money and find more creative personal ways of doing it. Just saying. All right. Pisces, my little bitty fishes, my lovely little occupy. Octopi, octopi, not occupy. Sorry. Um, you guys, you guys. All right. So Jupiter and Saturn will be occurring in your 12th house and Uranus will be in your third. So here's the good news. I'll give you good news, bad news for this. So here's the good news. This good news is that your spidey sense, uh, should be literally off the flipping hook this month. So you're going to get flashes of insights and clairvoyant dreams and just images and Clear, like hearing things like you're going to think you're going nuts, which you might be because listen, after this much time with the pandemic, we're all a little crazy right now. Um, so for you, you might be going a little crazier, <laughs> but your radar is going to be off the hook. Now, the thing about that is that Jupiter and Saturn will be coming out of your 12th house and squaring that. So not all the information you're going to get is going to be reliable, right? So because there's gremlins in the air all month. We're all dealing with it. Okay, so how does this impact you? 
Well, remember, Jupiter is your co-ruler. It's your ancient ruler. Jupiter was your original ruler, and then Neptune came along and pushed Jupiter out of the way and said, hey, butt up, buddy. <laughs> so you have two rulers. Jupiter is still your co-ruler for your sign, and Jupiter is conjunct Saturn in Aquarius, squaring that Uranus in your third house. This means two things to me. I could be wrong, but this is what it means to me. One, it means that you're, you, just like Sagittarius, going to have to be a lot more responsible about what comes out of your mouth. So even if you see it, you probably shouldn't say it, right? So disciplining yourself and being ethical and more principled about your words and the information you transmit is going to be very important this month. You're learning some big lessons about this, either being involved in the lesson or watching it, but it's happening. The other thing is that since, and this is speaking separate, this is speaking for me, if you are going to be a conduit, information if if you're going to be the 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 lightning rod that attracts divine information that has to be expressed through you so other people understand what's being said it's extremely important you get serious if this is what you want to be involved in it's very important that you get serious about this and you develop a routine and a discipline to manage this so um meditation chanting uh prayer you know going and having your 10 minute you know yeah, chit chat session with your Ouija board, whatever it is that you do, you need to have a routine and a structure around it because you need to give this a house, a framework. And I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Um, so if you go into Southeast Asia, right, one of the things that you'll see around the house and the businesses, uh, unfortunately, I have pictures of friend family, um, are miniature, or look, they look like dollhouses, little miniature replicas of the actual building. So if it's, for instance, a car dealership, there will be a little miniature replica of the car dealership out in front of the business, right? At the home, there's a little miniature replica of the home, like usually in the backyard or somewhere, but it's somewhere around the property. Every time you make a change to the house, like you add a room or you, you do something inside, you physically change the structure of the house or the business, you have to do the same thing to the miniature replica of the house or business that you have on the property. And the reason they do this is because they believe that the deceased don't really leave. And sometimes they, like with ghosts, sometimes they hang around for reasons unknown to us. So in order for them to not create mischief and, and cause problems inside the house, they give them their own house to live in. So the idea, of course, is that a spirit or a ghost doesn't recognize that this is not the same place as the humans inhabiting it because it, it looks identical to them, which it's supposed to. When you add an addition to the house, you're supposed to add an addition to the replica of the house so that the, the ghost or the spirit that inhabits the house doesn't feel left out, like you're still including them in the process. And that's how you uh, gain protection and favor from your ancestors, okay? And the, you know, the ghosts and spirits that are inhabiting the space, right, if, if it's a business. So this sounds really weird. It's very superstitious, and I get it. But ultimately, the idea is that you are honoring and respecting something that you don't understand but you're accepting that it is real and present and active and you are incorporating it into your life in a contained structured managed way right so for them the contained structured managed way is building a replica of the building so that the spirit can live in that right and changing this the replica like they change the house if the house changes so that they keep them involved in the change they're still part of the household or the business. For you, with this, this information, this conduit of information coming through, it's very important that you also build a structured, contained, managed space in your life to put this. You have to have some place to put this and you have to honor it and respect it. So creating a ritual, um, like a, a meditation space or, you know, playing like 10 minutes out of the thing, doing candle burning and, you know, or, or chanting or whatever it is that you have to do to create that block of space in your life for this, this divine transmission to occur in a contained regulated space will make your life thousands of times easier. Trust me when I tell you. Okay, so um, that is what we have for all 12 signs going through Zodiac for this month. Now, some other things I want you guys to keep in mind, and then we're going to close out this video, and then I've got a couple of notes I'm going to add at the end, um, or I'll add at, the, at the beginning. Anyway, the hotspots this month are going to be a re that whole, like a specifically the 13th. Circle the 13th on your calendar, right? Circle the 13th. Because Uranus station is direct that day, and Uranus kicks off this Jupiter-Saturn square. You know, Mercury is also coming down the, the pike with it. 
and it's going to be with Mars and Mars as a matter of fact will conjunct Uranus when it goes direct Ooh, yeah right talk about explosive uh, Mars Uranus conjunct squaring Jupiter Saturn there's some big big uh, boots coming down hard right um, and this is globally so I'm not sure I literally don't have I don't have it in me to look at this I don't it's we just got so much going on right now here in the US but what I can tell you is that the ultimate mission of these aspects, this Mars conjunct Uranus squaring Jupiter and Saturn we're looking at in the middle of the month is radical transformation for the greater good. Remember that and keep that in mind as we roll through this. At the same time, while this is happening, Venus will, will be moving into a trine with Mars. So we do have some reprieve. It's not going to be all awful. We don't have to worry about... Um, I wouldn't put a lot of worry into the, you know, the sky falling and, you know, those earth opening up and swallowing us all like, you know, <laughs> you know, or the murder hornets coming back as zombie murder hornets or anything like that. I mean, you know, anything that's possible this month, cause we're, we're on the calendar out of 2020, but the energy has not, we're not even out of that 2020 energy. So, but the thing I want you guys to remember, optimism is a discipline and ultimately we've got some really positive aspects in here that are going to make life work better. Radical transformation of our values and our priorities and our principles. This is what's at stake right now. So everything you're seeing, put it, those keywords as our framework around it and it's all going to make more sense and make it easier for you to figure out how to, um, move through this now with that said also i want you guys to know that um as we move forward for the next couple of months uranus is going to be moving like literally lightning for the next couple of months so all uranus stuff look at the house uranus rules in your chart and look where uranus is falling in your chart those areas of life are going to be moving at the speed of sound um now we will get a bit of a slowdown probably around late spring early summer things will slow things will slow down and become manageable again but between here and there it's like the literally the speeding train just kind of running the runaway train so hang on for dear life and don't let go um expect a lot of swift fast changes of events and circumstances and minds and maybe hearts there's a whole lot of hateful hard hearts out there that need to be turned um mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. so things are going to move fast for the next two or three months and this is just the beginning this is just the beginning so use this opportunity to focus on the best things for yourself okay um and i'm looking at my chart right now in case you're wondering <laughs> make sure you didn't miss anything um and that's it so there you go there's your january 2020 horoscope uh and also an update in case you guys are looking for the 2021 year ahead um, this year we're, I'm going to be doing that in quarters. So Jen, not January, the year 2021 will be broken up into four quarters, January through March, April through June, July through September, and then October through December. Um, I'm doing this not only for my own sanity, but, and time, con um, time limitations, but also I think it's just gonna be easier to digest and it'll be easier to focus on the stuff that's happening this year. We've got a hell of a year, a hell of a year ahead of us. Nothing like 2020. Thank God. <laughs> um, but this one should be good too. And I expect that we will finally, finally find a, a working vaccine and be out from under this pandemic. I could be wrong, but I'm betting you it's going to be like late May, June. Like it's going to be summer before we get out from underneath this, the boot of this, fan, this pandemic. Um, and the reason I say that is because I, I know people are saying that the pandemic is, oh, it's Pluto and Capricorn, you know, um, and what is the other one? Well, they're not saying it's Uranus and Taurus, well, it certainly could be, right? I think it's Pisces. And I think the pandemic is literally the goddess in, intervening um, and, you know, forcing some hard lessons, so, forcing some hard lessons because boy, it took all this for some people to even change their minds about stuff that was obvious to the rest of us, right? It took this much this much after everything else that we have seen this year it took literally the freaking pandemic and people around them that they know dying and some of them still refuse still refuse to see it but what are you going to do um so anyway if that is the case um the jupiter will be moving to pisces to join neptune um which is which is the sign of mercy and compassion and the goddess and all things feminine 
uh, and spiritual. So we may finally get reprieve and get out from underneath the boot of this pandemic, I think in May or June, um, but certainly not before then. Um, so with that, you know, plan and prepare. I, and remember, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. All right, folks, uh, that is it. I got to go do some work. I'll talk to you guys later.